Sometimes coyote or tsoshk is bear also, bear. And this is a, they're one and the same in the narrative tradition. Uh, they're one and the same. This one's about bears, wonderful kettle. One day, or kihamaha, Pero was cooking at his camp. He had a kettle of meat and corn, which he had just taken out of the ashes and coals, and the food had been buried, cooking all day long. And he put the meat and corn on top of the ashes and coals. And just then, a troop of uh, soldiers came along, and they saw Pero busy at cooking, and they saw the kettle, and they smelled the good food, the kettle was really boiling away. They could see that, but they could see no fire. Kwatsi per, the soldier said in greeting. How are you? Dawa eh, per, said. I'm fine. And he kept on being busy. You are busy with your cooking, the soldiers asked. Ah, per, answered, yes. And the soldiers were very curious about the boiling kettle of stew, and they marveled at how it was boiling, and there was no fire that they could see. Your stew is boiling beautifully, the soldier said. Uh, ah, it is boiling. It is boiling, Pepero agreed matter-of-factly. And finally, curiosity getting the best of them, the soldiers asked, uh, how is it that that stew is boiling when there is no fire under your kettle? And Bell, noting their overly anxious curiosity, said, Oh, if that's, it's just the kind of kettle it is. It boils like that by itself. That must be a wonderful kettle. The soldiers marveled. Ah, it is, Pero said casually. It is quite useful. And the soldiers talked among themselves, and without wanting to be too eager, they said to Pero, Compari, do you think you can give us that wonderful kettle? And Pero kept on being busy, and then he turned to them and he said, uh, I don't think there is any way that I can give it to you. The kettle was really boiling away. The smell of the meat and corn was delicious. Indeed, it was a marvelous kettle. They had to have it, and the soldiers said, Well, let us buy it from you. And Pero said, uh, I don't think I can sell it to you. It's a favorite of mine. But he saw that the soldiers were ready to bargain their treasures for the kettle, and he pretended to be less reluctant to part with his kettle. And so they bargained, the soldiers making an offer, and Pero holding back, the soldiers raising their price, and Pero seeming, seeming to be holding back less and less, until the soldiers said, uh, we will give you your weight in gold for the kettle. And Pero, pretending a sorrowful reluctance, said, uh, you have made me a generous offer for my beloved wonderful kettle, but I think it is a fair price. You can have it. And the soldiers brought Pero his weight in gold, and they took the plain old kettle, and they rode off. <laughs>